Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start chapter 10. Chapter 10, as we previously told you, is actually an introduction to statistics. And before we go into statistics, the first thing we're going to talk about is probability. So a lot of the things that we're going to talk about today are stuff that you've heard before, kind of. So we'll kind of, kind of build on that and see where we go. So 10.1, we're going to talk about probability. Okay, probability... There are two types of probabilities. One is a theoretical probability. Theoretical probability. And also we have an empirical probability, right? So probability, so theoretical probability is if I go ahead and flip a coin, half the time I will get heads, half the time I'll get tails. So the empirical probability is probably where actually we actually do an experiment and we flip the coin and we flip the coin a hundred times and see how many times we're going to get heads and see how many times we're going to get head tails. Okay? So if you look at page 677, there is a graph there that shows the theoretical probability versus the actual experimental or empirical probability, right? If you look there, the interesting part is that the blue line there is 50% is where you expect it to become a, to be, right? The probability, the theoretical probability is 50%, right? However, if you look at the red line, even after tossing the coin 200 and what, 225 times, you actually do not get 50%. So that kind of gives you a little bit of perspective of the difference between empirical and theoretical. And we also have what we call the law of law of large numbers. Law of large numbers meaning that if we do the empirical probability many and many, 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 many times, enough times, it'll in the end approach the theoretical probability. Okay, and that's what we call the law of large numbers. Okay. So let's go for page 678. The probability of an event E, this is the blue box on top. Probability of an event E is the value that its relative frequency of occurrence approaches in the long run. Again, the law of large numbers of long run there, right? Okay, so let's go to example number one and see what we can, if we can actually do some of these things. All right, so in example number one, it has us do some, figure out some probabilities. So example number one, A, find the probability of each of the following events. Tossing two heads in a row on two tosses of a fair coin. Okay, so it's a fair coin, and we're going to do two tosses, and the, so we can get what? We can get tail, 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 heads, heads, tail, heads, head, right? In other words, there are four, so for, you know, for us to get what? We're going to try to get what? Tossing it and get two heads in a row. So getting heads and heads, right? So out of the four possible outcomes, there is one. So there is one over four. Or we can say that the first toss to get a head, the probability is one half. And then to get the second toss, a head also is another half. And we can get the one quarter that way. Okay? Either way, we still come up with the same answer. One quarter. Okay? So that's A. Let's go to B. In B, it asks us, drawing a queen from a standard deck of 52 cards. So there are 52 cards. And as you all know, there are how many queens? There are four queens. So that'll be 1 over 13. So that would be B. Let's do C. C says, rolling a sum of four on a single roll of two fair dice. So we have two dices, and we're going to try to roll four. So what are the ways that we can get a four? We can get roll a one and a three, or we can roll a three and a one. We can also run roll a two and a two. We get doubles, right? Okay, so we have, so, and how many different... How many different types, how many different combinations are there? There are six different ways you can get here, right? One through six. And on the second row, there are also six. So that's six times six, 
36, and there's 1, 2, 3. So it's going to be 3 over 36, 1, 12. Okay? Let's go to D, D. Having tendinitis, if your doctor tells you that further tests are needed to determine whether your sore knee is caused by tendinitis, bursitis, arthritis, or a torn meniscus. Okay. Well, we don't know any of the probabilities here, right? So we really can't calculate anything. So what does it say? Because the four outcomes may not be equally likely, the probability cannot be determined. Okay, that makes sense, right? Okay, let's move on to example number two. Find the probability of rolling a sum divisible by three on a single roll of two fair dice. So we're going back to the two fair dice here, okay? And we're going to run, they want to know the probability of rolling a sum that is divisible by three. So we can actually, there are different ways that we can go there, right? We can either roll a three, or we can roll a six, or a nine, or a 12, right? So three, we have what? We have one, two, or two and one. Six, we have one, five, five, one, two, four, four, two, three, and three. Nine, you have what? We can roll a nine, we can roll a three, six, six, three, four, five, five, four. Is there anything else? That's it. Twelve. We have that. So we have how many different ways? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12 out of, again, 36 different possibilities, so 12 out of 36, one third, okay? So that's that, and then there's a blue box that says, a definition there, probability function, probability function, probability function is the actual, when you take the distributions and you plot it and you show what the probability looks like. So the probability distribution, okay, is the probability distribution function, right? So it's a PDF, so probability distribution function, right? So, let's go to number three. So the, the, the interesting thing about here is that you, when you add them all together, they should add to one, okay? They should add to one. So all the different probabilities, when you, if you did them correctly, they should all add to one. And then A, and then number one, each probability has to be between zero and one, okay? We cannot have a probability that is greater than one, right? You can't have a probability of two. Probability is always going to be greater than percents or whatever, but it's still going to be between zero and one. You cannot have a negative probability either, right? Okay? So that's that. Let's go to example number three. Prior to the Final Four basketball tournament, a sports anal analyst considers the strengths and weaknesses of the four remaining teams and suggests the probability distribution shown, blah, blah, blah. We got that. So we want to see if this is a probability function. So what do we need to do? We need to add them together and to see if they add to one, right? So if we add them together, what do we get? Oh, boy. Oh, we do not get one. So therefore... This is not a probability, it's not a valid probability function, okay? Okay, determining probabilities, okay, we'll go with that. Let's go to example number four. Example number four, Sal opens a box of dozen chocolate-covered creams and generously offers two of them to Val. Val likes the vanilla creams the best, but all the chocolates look the same on the outside. So there are four of the 12 are vanilla, and the red, uh, the remaining eight are going to be chocolates, okay? So what are we trying to find? What is the probability that both of Val picks turn out to be vanilla, right? So we have four vanillas, so we have four vanillas, and we have eight chocolates. We have 12 all together. And so we're going to choose two. So there's 12 of them. So how many different ways can we choose two, right? 
So if you remember this, this is 12 choose 2 or 12 combination 2. Okay. This is also denoted in this fashion. You can put it this way. All right. Okay. And this, if you remember, is, so the equation is like this, right? We have this is the same as r factorial, n minus r factorial over n factorial, right? Okay, so let's do 12 choose 2. So if I 12 and 2, so this would be 12, this would be 2. So I'm going to have 12 factorial over here. I'm going to have 2. 12 minus 2 is 10 factorial. So we're going to have times 10 factorial here. Okay. So we have what? 12, this is 12 times 11 times 10 times all the way to 1. Then I have 10 factorial, so I have 10 times 9 times all the way to 1, right? So it's obviously that for 10 to 1, all cancel out here, right? And I still have 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1. So I have what? 12 times <clears throat> 11 divided by 2. So it's going to be 12 times 11 divided by 2, which is 66. So I have 66 different combinations that I can pick two out of, right? When I pick two, I'm going to have 66 different combinations. Now out of those, I need to pick the two out of the four vanillas, right? So that would be this, okay? So this is going to be 4 factorial over 2 factorial over 4 minus 2 factorial. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, 2 times 1, and I have 2 factorial here, so it's 2 times 1. So the 2, 2, and 4 cancel out, I end up with 6. So there are 6 possible ways to pick the 2 different, I mean the 4 vanillas, right? So I'm going to have 6 over 66 for that. So then now there's another way to do this. And I'm sure, I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, well, this is not what we learned, right? We, in the, what we learned earlier, what you probably learned is this. So for me to pick the first, so it has to be a vanilla and then a vanilla, right? So the odds of me picking a vanilla on the first one is what? There are four vanillas out of the 12, right? But the second time when I pick, now I only have 11 left, right? I only have 11 left, right? And there are three left. There are three vanillas left, so it would look like this, right? So what do we get? 4, 3, 12, cancel out, 1 over 11. Same thing, right? Two different ways to get there, though, right? Okay. Okay. Multiplication principle of probability. Suppose an event A has a probability P1, and event B has a probability P2 under the assumption that A had occurred. Okay? Then the probability that both A and B occur is P1 times P2, which makes sense. Okay? Underneath there, it says, give you something interesting here. It says, if the events A and B are independent, we can omit the phrase under the assumption that A occurs, because the assumption would not matter if they are independent, okay? So one of, this is one of the biggest things that people get confused over when we're doing probability, okay? There are two different things. There are, one is what we just said is independent, independent. Independent is one, and the other one that we often hear is mutually exclusive, mutually exclusive. Okay. So what's the difference between these two? Okay. Mutually exclusive means that the two things cannot happen together. It's impossible then for them to happen together. In other words, I cannot roll on a single roll on a dice. I cannot roll a five and a six, right? Okay. Because it's either going to be five or a six. They're mutually exclusive. One, one having occurred gets rid of the possibility of the other one, right? So that's mutually exclusive, okay? Right? Independent is they are not linked together. They are not in any way one does one affect the other. In other words, 
what is the possibility of you wearing black shoes if I came to school late? Okay. You wearing black shoes has nothing to do with whether I show up to school late or not. So those two events are independent. In other words, one does not affect the other one. Okay? So that's what they mean by independent there. Okay? So that's one thing that we'll go into deeper, deeper, I'm doing deeper detail when we do, when we go into statistics. Okay? But just know that there are two different things and they are totally different. Okay? Example number five. According to the American Red Cross, the distribution of blood types in the United States population is for O is 45, A is 40, B is 11, AB is 4. So we have O type, O, A, B, and AB, 45, and then we have what? 45, 40, 11, and four. Okay. So you so these are percentages. If you add them together, what do we get? We get 85, 96, 100. So they all add to one, 100 percent right? So that's good. Okay. Now, if two people were chosen at random, find the probability that A both have type O. So A, I want type O. So the probability of me getting type O on the first one is that. All right? And the second one is going to be the same probability because it's still going to be 45%, right? Okay. Well, you could possibly say that since you picked one of them out, that the other one would be affected by that. But when you're talking about 45% of what? What's the American population worth? 320 million, right? Taking one away does not affect this at all. So we just go 0.45 times 0.45, right? And if you do that, you get 0.2025, or 20.25%, right? B. B is neither has type A. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. Neither has type A. So the first one, I cannot have type A. So it is actually 1 minus the 40%, right? So what would that be? That would be 60%, right? So the first one would be 60% to get not an A. And the second one also is not an A. 0 0.6 is the same thing, right? 0.36. C. Both have the same blood type. So they have the same blood type. That means if you had O, the next one has to be O. If you had A, the next one has to be A, B, and you would then go on and on. So it's going to be 0.45. They are both A and both A, both B, both A, B, right? And you would add those together, and if you add them together, you're going to get 0 0.3762. 0 0.3762. Okay? So we're going to stop right here today.